Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And uh, as a part of uh, today's discussion, we will try to understand why does ICH recommend only specificity and uh, limit of detection for the validation of uh, an impurity procedure with the limit test. We know that the impurities can be either controlled under the limit test or either they can be quantified. So today's focus of the discussion is going to be on validation of an impurity procedure with the limit test approach. So if you look at uh, various uh, regulatory guidelines, it can be ICH, USP, it can be sometimes NVISA uh, or EMA, you will find that all of them have recommended certain parameters needs to be conducted during different test procedures and uh, what going to discuss about impurity test procedure by the limit test so what are the parameters uh, recommended by all these regulators and you will find that for impurity test procedure by limit test approach two parameters are recommended the first one is specificity and the second parameter is the limit of detection or the second parameter is the limit of detection so the question you may have that you know why ICH or any another guideline has not proposed the rest of the another parameters because there are few more parameters which generally can be considered for the validation and uh, we will try to understand one by one why these parameters are not possible or not recommended by the ICH see I would like to have I would like to make a disclaimer over here these are all my opinions and they are not necessarily be true and hence please take this information with a pinch of the salt and uh, this is going to be a logical discussion so let us first understand why ICH has not proposed uh, precision for the impurity by limit test so what is required to uh, to confirm whether the method is precise so we can understand that the quantification is necessary to express the precision of the test procedure so you can express the the precision of the test procedure in terms of maybe standard deviation or percent RST but what is important you need to have this certain result which is measured at the end of the test procedure maybe impurity content is found to be 0.2 percent in one observation 0.22 percent in another observation so in this case you are actually quantifying impurity at the end of the experiment and when, when you measure this uh, three different observations you have three different quantifiable results for the impurity and hence you can able to calculate standard deviation or the percent relative standard deviation and then you can express the <clears throat> the degree of scatter how these results are scattered in a given space so it's very important without any quantifiable measurable results precision is not going to be a possibility let us now look at the, the kind of uh, test procedure we are discussing. We are talking about the limit test. So in any limit test, you are only going to confirm whether the, the test is meeting the specification in terms of its compliance part. For example, you have a limit test for an uh, impurity A present into a paracetamol tablet. And the limit is said to be uh, not more than 10 ppm. So you are just going to confirm at the end whether the found impurity into a test sample is below 10 ppm or above 10 ppm. Maybe in comparison with the, the size of the spot or the intensity of the spot. But in this process, are you going to say that, okay, the, the impurity content is 9 ppm? or whether the impurity content is uh, 11 ppm, you are not going to quantify any result and that's what this particular test is called as the limit test. 
and hence as there is no quantifiable results observed as we are not able to measure any result hence the the degree of closeness between this observation also cannot be established or we will not be able to express the precision for the limit test let us understand what about the accuracy so why can't we perform the accuracy for the limit test and here is the explanation according to me again for accuracy we need to know the amount added and amount found and that's the way you can calculate the percent recovery or the bias we may have the amount added but we will again miss the amount found see you can say that okay now this is the impurity a uh, by tlc and i am going to spike the known content of impurity a standard maybe 10 ppm or 20 ppm or 25 ppm so you have the amount added you have the amount added you know what how much amount of the impurity a is actually spiked in the sample but a loan amount added is going to suffice the requirement to determine the accuracy certainly not you also need to have the amount found and again the question remains the same as there is no amount found possible because we do not do any kind of quantification at the end of limit test and hence again the accuracy is also not to be a possibility let us now understand you know why not a limit of quantitation or quantification limit we talked about the limit of detection is possible but why not the limit of quantification and here is the explanation to determine a limit of quantification or loq again the quantification of the analyte is necessary and quantification is not part of the limit test how you are going to say that okay now this is my limit of quantitation isn't it but can you able to say that this is my limit of detection let us take an example of the uh, or the earlier discussed example where the limit of an impurity is uh, assessed by the tlc method impurity a present into a paracetamol tablet is tested by the tlc method and the limit is how much not more than 10 ppm so you will run the the different tlc plates with the impurity a reference standard let us say you have run the tlc plate with 10 ppm have you observed the spot for impurity a you said yes there is a, a good spot i can visualize and hence you are able to detect the, the 10 ppm of the impurity a into your tlc procedure then further you decided to run the tlc plate with let us say 5 ppm impurity a concentration and then i will ask you whether you are able to uh, identify the spot on the TLC plate now what, with the 5 ppm concentration and your response is yes Pascal I can also see the spot of the 5 ppm so can I now say that okay now your method of analysis can also detect the 5 ppm spot yes absolutely yes then you go on with the little lower concentration of let us say 3 ppm you ran the TLC plate with 3 ppm impurity A and you could able to see the spot and then further you decided to run the tlc plate with the 2 ppm impurity a concentration but this time you need not you have not identified the spot out of the impurity a so can you say that okay my method is not able to detect the impurity a with the 2 ppm concentration yes or no but in earlier experiment you have able to you were able to identify the spot with the 3 ppm concentration so with this logic can i say that the your test procedure has a limit of detection of 3 ppm for impurity a yes or no and is that way the detection limit or limit of detection is very much possible in case of the limit test it can be color identification the tlc plate anything but the detection is quite possible but quantification as there is no question that you know the quantification is not part of this test procedure there is no question about quantifying the impurity even at any level it can be the your lower level like limit of quantitation or at the specification level of 10 ppm 
and hence again the LOQ is not going to be the possibility during the validation. Then why not linearity? And here is the explanation according to me. Again, we need to draw a curve of the concentration of the analyte versus its response to conclude the linearity. So how one can draw a linearity? We need to define two important terms, concentration versus its response. So you are in the process of understanding whether you are getting the response which is proportional to the concentration. If concentration increases and response increases, you, you will say, okay, now my method is linear and there will be certain range probably possible. But what are the parameters required to draw the linearity? You need to have the uh, analyte concentration and its achieved response, yes or no. As a response uh, in terms of measurable value is not available for limit test as the response in terms of the measurable value is not available for the limit test linearity stands out of the equation just imagine in case if you are drawing a linearity for an hplc procedure where you can able to identify the response in terms of the peak area will you be able to have the concentration and response available absolutely yes you have both the terms and you will be able to draw a linearity across the to these two different terms again the x-axis you should have the concentration which is uh, independent parameter and across y-axis you are going to draw a response which is a dependent parameter and then you will see okay what is the correlation coefficient your y-intercept slope etc and you will going to conclude the linearity but in this case you have only one parameter now in case of limit test, you can have only one parameter possible. That is the concentration. You can make the five different concentration beautifully. You can run the TLC plate also, but how you are going to quantify that response? Isn't it? The spot size is not quantifiable. The small spot, bigger spot, or the high. This, this is not possible, isn't it? And because of that, you do not have the measurable value. As there is no measurable value available, again the linearity stands out of the equation for the limit test. Okay, so we talked about uh, which parameters are not possible, right? And uh, here are the recommendations according to me. It is advisable to conduct the robustness parameters. See, ICH and VISA. A PHUR, USP, all they talks about the robustness needs to be performed during the method development. But I often see that the people do conduct robustness during the validation. So what is the purpose of advising that you can conduct the robustness? But before that, let us understand whether the robustness is possible or not. Now, as let us say, we have taken the example of uh, impurity A by TLC procedure and you need to have a mobile phase for the to run the TLC, to run the TLC. So you can understand whether how much uh, variation is allowable in terms of uh, getting the, the, the retardation factor of the spe specified value. There could be certain RF value required to run the TLC plate to quantify the, not quantify, I'm so sorry, but to detect and confirm whether the impurity A is below specification level or not. And you have a mobile phase composition of, uh, let us say, water and uh, ethyl acetate with the IPA. So you need to understand, you know, how much variation is possible in terms of the organic content. Can I vary the organic content by 10% plus or minus and how that impacts on to my retardation factor? Is that possible? So that way, in that context, I advise you to conduct the sum of the robustness parameters. Now, the second recommendation could be a little bit uh, a conflict with my earlier statement, but let me recommend that. It is advisable to perform a precision to get confidence, not in terms of the degree of scatter, but just to conclude that the lab is able to execute the test procedure. Now, as we said that in case of TLC, I do not have any quantifiable result. But can I able to at least understand if I run the six times, if I run the TLC plate for six times, do I able to 
create that spot at the similar height, maybe in terms of the retardation factor. So I will not uh, measure the degree of scatter or the I will not do the, the standard deviation or percent RSD, but at least can I run the TLC plate for six times to build the confidence that yes, my laboratory is able to execute the given test procedure. And the retardation fact times or factor in case of TLC can be just uh, recorded for the information and that will help you to understand you know whether we are getting the similar kind of the retardation factor or not. You can also conduct the intermediate precision and that way you will get the extra confidence uh, during the validation. Again, these recommendations are my own opinions and uh, it's your point, it's your view to take it forward or you don't want to take it forward. So before I conclude on the presentation or this particular topic, I would like you to welcome on joining the Pharma Growth Hub. See, my name is Bhaskar Napte and I am on the mission to help pharmaceutical professionals to get an absolute clarity on various such topic. So in case if you are really looking forward to the, the clarity on such different topics, if you want to accelerate your career growth with the help of Pharma Growth Hub, you are most welcome to join the Pharma Growth Hub. So in the description, you will find the, the offer to join the Pharma Growth Hub. And uh, these are the courses uh, prepared by me with the help of my experience. And I hope that you will find the course content very much useful for your progress. I look forward to welcome you on the Pharma Growth Hub platform. Thank you so much.